We are in Ardcatton Priory Gardens on the shores of Loch Etive, about five miles from Connor Bridge. The gardens as we see them today began to emerge from about the 1900s in the hands of the present owners, grandparents and then parents. And now they are managed by the present owners with just one full-time paid gardener, which is pretty impressive when you look around here. It is interesting in this large area to see the different shrubs and trees allowed the space to develop as, they, as much as they want to, but yet they are maintained so it's not all a big tangly mess. It really looks most impressive. Coming out of the part of the garden where the rhododendrons and azaleas and shrubs are, you come, you come to a gently sloping lawn in front of a most impressive, beautiful house. And you do wonder whether we're intruding here, but it is open to the public. And we follow the monk's walk, which goes along the side of the wall. And beyond the wall is the, is the road, and beyond the road, is the lock and very peaceful with the bird songs and just a gentle breeze in the air. I saw this lovely old stone lying in the ground with some writing on it and it says I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh mine aid and a lovely drawing of, of a, a flower um, and leaves round the other side. These are the ruins of Ardcatton Priory. Originally there was a small church with a cloister, but most of what survives was later built in the 15th and early 16th century when the church was enlarged. And the west end of the church and cloister have become incorporated into Ardcatton House. So this priory was founded in 1231 by Duncan MacDougall and the order of monks are called the Vallis Cowlians, who focused exclusively on the spiritual side of life. They were dedicated to prayer and contemplation, and they did no physical labour, but lived off land rents, endowments and bequests. Their communities were small, with no more than 20 monks allowed, and at Ardcatton there were periods when as few as three monks lived here. The name Alice Gaulian is comes from where the first monastery was founded in Burgundy, in a spot called Val de Choux, or Valley of the Cabbages, and in Latin this is Valis Caulium. So this priory was monopolised by the MacDougall family. And by the end of the 1400s, the position of prior had been held by three MacDougalls. But in 1602, the priory became the property of the commendator Archibald Campbell. And under the Campbells, the buildings are gradually turned into a private house.
Most of these carved stones are of late medieval date, but one is much earlier and carved in a very different style to them. It was probably carved during the 10th century and was originally intended to stand upright, possibly within a burial ground, so that the cross on the back was also visible. The supporting foot was later cut off and the whole slab cut down so it could be reused as a grave cover. It may have been brought here from elsewhere, for there are no obvious traces of any early ecclesiastical site here at Ardcatton, and it is such of a such high quality that it must have marked an important religious site. This is a well-preserved table tomb dating from 1715, commemorating Alexander Campbell, the sixth laird of Lochnell, and his wife. This was once the monk's pond, used to house the fish that were caught in Loch Etive and then intended for the priory table. But it was drained when the garden took its current form back in the early 20th century to stop all the midges. We thought we could go and visit Barkeldyne Castle, but it is an exclusive venue for weddings and bed and breakfasts. So we're looking at it from a distance and in the other direction is a fantastic panorama of mountains stretching as far as the eye can see. About 1220, Duncan MacDougall, who built Ardcatton Priory, built Dun Staffnage Castle as a fortress, as a statement of his status of Lord of Lorn. It is one of Scotland's oldest stone castles and guards the approaches to Loch Etive. The castle was built largely from local sandstone and its shape was dictated by the outcrop of rock on which it stands. This dark conglomerate is composed of pebbles and gravel, cemented together 400 million years ago. The MacDougalls built this chapel for their own use in the 1200s, and the quality of craftsmanship reflects their wealth and ambition. The chapel had no burial rites, and so the MacDougall family were probably buried on the Isle of Leesmoor. Mm -hmm. 